and welcome back to Making of Merly, a uh, character for the Kickstarter video game Grey Skies Dark Waters. Um, this is a kind of let's make where you watch me make Merly and I talk a lot of shit. Um, today, uh, in the last session, we um, started uh, working on the pants. We did a bunch of detailing with these seams um, along the polygroups, as well as fiber meshing a little bit, um, having a bit of fun with these kind of frayed edges. Um, Today I would like to um, clean this up a little bit, it's looking a little mechanical, uh, and then maybe uh, move on to the hat, um, since that is the uh, lowest detail item um, so far on her character, and we, we're always trying to kind of have a balance between the detail levels of the different objects. So what I'm going to go right in ahead and do um, is kind of select these edges here and um, start pushing and pulling to make sure that they're on top of the actual base mesh. Um, what I'm thinking about, I'll probably try and do after that, is to dyno mesh them and uh, see what we can do there. Um, let's see, pretty sure there's another seam down here. And I'm also pretty sure that we had, I think, maybe a size 4 for the insert mesh. Oh, that was um, when it was snapping. That's something I find really strange about the insert. Um, Curved brushes and Z brushes that their uh, their size differs when you're, you're snapping them to something. So I'm not sure why that is. It's a very strange little artifact. Um, not sure why that is. Like I said, not sure why that is, but it, it is how it is. Um, and it's not no biggie. I'm gonna add a couple more seams. Kind of get this coin pouch here in this pocket up here. Uh, that's just one of those details where I think that it might make a bit of a difference, kind of sculpting that in, kind of adds a little bit. It's lining up with that seam right back there. Gonna, there's, you can also hold shift and it should make it in a line, but it never quite does. So if I go right here, nope, doesn't want to do that today. Let's see here. I've got all that. Kind of doing one last pass, making sure that everything's the way I wanted to. Um, the, and I did not do the belt loops. So I'm gonna jump right in. Um, I'm feeling the performance a bit, so I'm gonna switch away from the high puffballs. Uh, find that jacket sub tool. Where are you? Here we go. Let's just already oh, see a lot more frames per second going in. Sure, uh, when you're sculpting, it's not gonna be the biggest thing. But it does make a difference having a nice frame per second. I'm going to make sure my um, start and end are locked, and then I'm going to just kind of drag these out to get a bit of that uh, loop volume that you get for belt loops. They're not completely fat because um, the jeans fabric is just a little tough, so it's always kind of got a little bit of its own shape going on. Uh, I like how that one went. There's another one, let's see. Usually you've got belt loops in the back, Two on the sides and then two in the front. Yep, and this seems to be just that very typical setup. There's one back here. I'm gonna move this up a bit like I did on the last one and pull this out. Kind of getting a little bit of a twist in there. I like that. It gives it a little bit more variety. And then we've got one more right here. Again, pulling it out a little bit further. The reason I do that is just so I have a little bit more volume. This seems, this one went a little bit too far. So I'm gonna go back and redraw that one, fill it up just a tiny bit, just give it that extra bit of volume, and then kind of pull it out like that. Give it a bit of a gravity effect there. It's always a nice little detail to add a little bit of that convincing realism, like it's actually in belt loop and not just um, a, a, a geometrical flat plane or something like that. So. I'm not quite happy with this one, how this one's shaping. I'm just gonna kind of keep tweaking a bit. Very kind of. That's fine. There we go. One more. Right around up here. Um, let's pull that one up a bit. Well, it is actually going all the way down to this loop. Is that something that I absolutely need? Hmm. Let's see, how far do these. These are going down a lot further too, but I don't think I'm, I'm going to focus on that. I'm actually going to... It's, the, it's a weird shape, and I don't think it'll be very visible, so I'm not going to worry about that very much. 
But if I really wanted to stay completely true to reference, I, I would have to make it go all the way down here. But that just feels too large, and the alternative would be to drag this line up. Which, it's a viable alternative. I might do that anyway. Um, but I think the belt loops don't really need that. I'm gonna drag this one here. Um, it's funny, it seems like the angle from which I drag the belt loops often affects a lot exactly how how they're kind of shaping up. So if I drag from back here, or if I drag from here, it'll actually kind of twist that belt loop. Well, if I drag from this side, it kind of twists it from the other side. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I've, n I've never really researched that in intensively about how the curved brush projects it, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the Z-project part of the insert curve. So we've got the belt loops. Uh, I'm going to add these littler um, loops. Just gonna go with a smaller size here. Probably let's say five if we're using um, 10 for that. Uh, I'm gonna just see. I think I'm actually gonna draw these symmetrical and then um, pull them out to fit the shape of the respective side because they do have a very symmetrical shape. Let's see, it's not quite it probably going to be spending several iterations just trying to get this shape done. I'm going to increase my curve step because it's just putting a bit too much, too many subdivisions in it. And this has got to be a pretty smooth shape, so I don't need that many subdivisions to crinkle it up. Basically, if you've got a very uh, crinkly shape, then um, you want to have a lot of curve step. But if you've got a very flat surface, it actually helps smooth things out. Also, six smooths your curve. Um, it actually helps to smooth things out by just um, using less curve divisions, a higher curve step, in other words. I like how this one is. It's a little off balance, but I like that. I think that's working well. I'm not going to worry about this since this is going to be under the scene. Same thing for this one how much I can kind of wish I could um, drag it out. Let's make sure I have constancy. Uh, constancy always checks um, for below using the Z project functions I believe. That's my theory is that I use those Z project functions, I have no idea. But it kind of snaps the curve onto the surface underneath when it's working correctly. Often it just kind of doesn't work perfectly which is a little unfortunate. Actually, these seams partially... No, they're going underneath. We'll just sculpt a little bit on top to make it look like they're actually sewn underneath there. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to turn off X. i use my move topological and kind of drag these out on this side as well. Pull this underneath that. There we go. And adjust this one. There we go. I'm getting that shape. Just because, well, if we've already got this detail mapped out here, um, I like how this detail is working in this model here. Why not? Um, detail definitely never hurts, and right now I'm kind of modeling all of the base to geometry uh, that I want to be detailing hardcore later on. So, yeah. Let's see. I'm happy with everything, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So, what we definitely still need is a separation here for the button, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be modeling this in, or if this is going to be um, sculpted in. Hmm. It's a very, very good question, y'all. Because what I could do is I could go um, onto the pants mesh and actually detach this, or bevel it, or, or something like that. Um, I wonder, I wonder, could I just detach this? Would that make sense? And then push the one side in. That's what I would have to do, is push the one side in. Or is that just going to be too much of a bitch-ass thing to do. Um, 
one thing I'm noticing here is, is this seam actually stops down there. So I'm going to kind of um, delete this part and focus on what I think I'm going to do actually. This is the really hard. See, what I'm trying to think is should I make an extra piece which just goes on top of this? from this seam right here, basically duplicating this poly group out and then kind of pulling it pulling it out. Um, or should I completely go and sculpt this outward, maybe detach? I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with a detach. I think I'm gonna go with a detach since that is just truer to the original shape and I wanna get as true to that original shape as I possibly fucking can. Um, but that's gonna be tough because um, I can't use the Z modeler brush with a mesh that has different subdivisionals. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm actually going to try and freeze the subdivisionals on a duplicate mesh. No joke, I'm, I'm not going to risk my original mesh. And I'm going to not use the freeze mode because that um, will actually reproject them later on. I'm going to go to the highest subdivision level, uh, delete lower, and then um, later try and use the reconstruct subdiv. So it's essentially the same thing as free subdivision levels, but I lose less detail in the sculpt. Which, even though there's not a lot of detail right now, I just uh, kind of feel uncomfortable about uh, using actions that destroy detail. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do bevel, edge loop complete. I'm going to just do a single row since I'm going to delete that row as soon as I finish beveling. It's going to be right here. Okay, this is too much of an edge loop. I'm going to see if edge loop partial gives me a better result. And I uh, might be so bold as to split this here. Nope, nope, nope. No, I'm using bevel here. What I want to do is I want to split this point here and then the edge loop partial. Oh, come on. It's edge loop partial. You shouldn't... Uh, let's see here. We want to... Well then what I'll do is I'm actually going to split the edge here. And that should give me a make the bevel stop right there. Exactly what I want. So that's why I'm going to bevel this. And I'm gonna use two rows after all because then it'll be easier to kind of hide this and we'll say delete hidden. Now what we need to do is Go into the stitch point, and this is where I'm really crossing my fingers hoping this will work. Delete these edges on the side here. And now, see if we can reconstruct subdiv. So this is definitely a cross finger mode. Yes, it worked! Okay, seems like we've got our subdivisions back as well as a nice split down the middle. We're gonna use a move topological brush to pull this out. And there's. I think my Wacom Traveler is doing that Windows thing again. Yeah, that's that's what it was doing. It's just stops responding sometimes, which is real annoying. I'm gonna use the Accu Curve to kind of get that uh, pinched difference here and kind of drag this over. And out, over and out, over and out. Here we go, over and out. Now I'm gonna take the uh, pants underneath and drag this inside more. It's kind of uh, important that you have a, just a tiny bit of overlap in order to make sure that even if the camera moves a bit, it looks like a pants. So this is this is modeled the the oh shit fuck the fuck oh, <laughs> what happened there oh my god what the fuck uh what the fuck okay, it's still working here. I don't know if you kind of realized what just happened, but my mesh lost all realm of, of good and bad. It, it, it's <laughs> oh goodness, maybe it, maybe it doesn't. Maybe if I reconstruct something, it doesn't. Um, I have no idea what happened. All right, let's go back and go to the lowest subdivision. Then we'll reconstruct subdiv one more time, so we get to the lowest. Go to the highest. Oh, oh well, hey. That's a really interesting error. I've never gotten this error before. It seems like it's completely lost the vertex count. Um, wow. This is hardcore. And, and even if I undo it, it won't go back. Okay. Ah, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? 
doing fine here. He's maybe duplicating the mesh, going down one. Alright, this is the duplicate version, reconstruct subject. What happens now? Nope, it dies. Okay, wow, that is that is super hardcore. Um, I've never had that happen before, but it seems to be fine here, so maybe uh, <clears throat> what I'll do is I will, after I finish sculpting this, um, just make a copy of the mesh and go to the lowest subdivision there since that worked, and just continue sculpting on the medium subdivision. That is hardcore. But this, all right, so this is working, so at least, wow. That is, that is crazy insane. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one since we're not gonna use this anymore and this is gonna be our new base for the pond. Um, start doing the same thing I'd already started doing um, in the copy of the mesh before um, hardcore vertex uh, problem. <laughs> vertex killing went on. It's probably a hacker. If, I'm, if I was a... Um, if I was in an action movie, that would definitely be an actor who had just hacked my 3D mesh and caused the vertices to explode. Anyway, I'm dragging the pants on uh, the two parts on top of each other, uh, like I was doing in earlier, kind of dragging this out. I'm trying to get this shape here um, so it looks like uh, that stiff fabric that you get around your Pretty much anybody who wears jeans knows that the, the zipper is never quite sitting in there the way you want it to be sitting in there. So, adding that little detail I think will give a lot to the model. I'm going to turn off echo curve here since this one it's, it's not as important. Take this in so that uh, my button can come through properly. Um, and another thing I'm actually going to do is I believe I will split. Uh, no, nah, I won't. I, I won't. I won't. I was considering splitting the mesh and adding a hole for a button, but that's just too much um, effort. Um, well, too much effort for what we'll get because you can get pretty much the same looking result by just drawing the button on top of the top part of the on top of the top layer here. So that, since I'm actually going to switch to this, since this is my no subdivision sub tool here, and I'm gonna go and what I'll need to do is split this as well. So I'm gonna isolate this, BZM, kind of go into use my bevel trick again, right here. Yep, and this one is this side is already split. I'm gonna delete hidden. And then um, say close, concave hole, here we go, and here we go. And then we're going to go and delete that edge just so that we can keep the quads. Um, otherwise it'll subdivide strangely. Uh, use my move um, topological to drag it on top, make sure it stays on top, kind of like this. Well, uh, just a better layering effect in general. <laughs> I'm going to take this bottom side and drag it in here just so it's proper, nice and proper, like Mr. Proper. Uh, it's really funny, uh, Mr. Proper, uh, I'm not sure what you call him in the States, but the way I remember it is that in the States he was called Mr. Proper, I think. Um, well, anyway, he's called Mr. Hammer in Germany, and if I was to translate that back into English, you have hammer time. <laughs> Alright, it seems like there's something odd happening here. Um, am I, let me just double check to make sure I am in my move topological. I am. Um, I'm gonna go and double this edge. It seems like there's an inside edge. It's really odd. And delete this. Because it's definitely capped off. I'm gonna go and add some auto groups since this is all auto group anyway. Delete that and then go ahead and close this oh now that and then of course delete that extra triangle edge group um, make sure that here um, what I can actually do is I can just stitch this point over here theoretically I'm not sure what's happening with that 
place. Delete that edge. Can I delete that edge? It seems like there's an extra edge. Yes, I knew it. I'm gonna go and delete this face. Because Qmesh Poly, I'm gonna select the delete function. And that's what I love about this is you don't you can just delete the whole face. Now uh, it seems like there's another I just I can't stand it when, when my mesh there's there's imperfections in my mesh, so I'm going to go and See if I can somehow fix this up because there's just there's a problem. There's a problem, and it's right here. And if you see, there's this really odd thing going on. Here, this disconnect. Let's see if I can somehow. Nope, nope, not doing that. Delete. Nope, can't do that. Ah, I can delete these parts. Okay, that fixed it. All right, switch back. Uh, move topological. This time it'll work properly, like Mr. Hammer. Mr. Proper Hammer and go underneath. Just that layering, I think, will give it a lot more of the appearance of an actual um, piece of pants. Um, I like this thickness here. I'm probably going to go ahead and just panel loops my entire. There's going to be another risk operation, so I'm going to be working on a clone. Go ahead and a little lower, then go into my edge loop, panel loops. Um, uh, make it with no polish, absolutely, and my Windows driver just, just stopped again. So I'm gonna go take my thickness down a little bit. I'm not gonna do double because I still want to have them be connected. I'm gonna have just one, one of two loops. I'm not gonna have any inner pattern loops, and I think I'm going to ignore groups actually because we've we've already got everything divided that we need divided. I believe. I think, yeah, we can hit it with groups. And no real bevel. Ah, uh, keep that at 50. Elevation panel of two apps. Oh, that is way too much, but it's cool. We're gonna go down. Um, I usually like to do the dot zero zero six 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 panel loops. Nope, that's too much. It is too much. I'm sorry. It is too much. Panel loops? Nope. Too little. Let's see if we can just get a little. I like how that one looks. Now, what I want to do is take that elevation to negative 100, so it goes inside. And then we've just got that thin jeans fabric look, but for some reason, it's still it still seems to be doubling up. So zero bevel, yes. Basically, this just it, it works like a shell modifier in programs like 3ds Max. But what's surprising me is it, it still seems to be not ignoring my... Oh, somehow that turned off. Okay, and now it's, it's basically working like a shell modifier in 3 Max, and I think I have these actually mapped right here as well. Um, I just end up going here um, because sometimes I uh, have a couple of features that, are, that I haven't quite mapped out yet. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually thicken this little side up a tiny tidbit just um, to emphasize the fact that it is indeed its own piece of jeans fabric and it, it got stitched right there. I know that when I talk a lot about things like um, just the fabric quality and um, layering, all of this terminology I can just recommend that if you at all have the chance you go into Marvelous Designer because it's basically a, a fashion tutorial uh, uh, a sewing tutorial. Marvelous Designer is, in essence, a sewing tutorial, which teaches you how things work as far as fabric goes. It's very eye-opening, and it actually helped my ZBrush fabric a lot as well, which um, says a lot about a program is when you go in with absolutely zero um, sewing knowledge and you end up um, being able to visualize in your head how cloth works so well to the point that you just um, end up I have to delete my copy mesh I'm actually gonna just test my reconstruct subdiv here ah See, it failed so that's unfortunate ah, 
have windows. Um, very fascinating. Uh, it does not. It must be a triangle somewhere. Well, maybe if I go back to my panel loops, I think I'm just gonna undo all the way. And if I actually do hit double, and now try reconstruct subject, yep, that's working. The problem is somewhere there was a triangle because I hadn't um, doubled up all my panel loops. So, I'm gonna now repeat the same steps. Just dragging this out up here, dragging this. Drag this, there we go. And then I'm gonna drag the other one so you kind of get that blocky, pushed out, way too stiff fabric to actually wear as pants, but everybody wears it as pants anyway. Myself included. I wear pants. Though, uh, obviously, well, let's just stop right there. I was gonna say, obviously, I'm not wearing any right now, but oops, cat is out of the bag. I find sculpting with pants to be a terrible, terrible thing. Not sculpting pants, but when I sculpt, I like to have PJs or some loose fabric on to have my butt all comfy. We actually had a dedicated butt pillow in college, me and my best friend, where we would take turns using it to ease our butts off of the long sitting hours that were accumulated through all of that sculpting. So what I'm gonna do, these are basically straps. I'm going to work and adjust these shapes a little tiny bit more. And I think I might go and do the super risque thing of just doing a very high resolution dynamesh of all of these. Sometimes that ends up giving some really cool results because all these places right here will kind of merge up. But on the other hand, you lose that edge flow, which one could eventually use to um, kind of inset it and add more detail. So. I might play around with that, I am not 100% sure set on the idea, and I probably will um, do some more, um, yeah, I'm using new topological, what is going on here? I, I'm, this theory is starting to build in my head that this move topological brush actually doesn't count the actual topology, but just vertices which are real close to each other, because this should not be, what the hell? Do I, I have topological masking on? That is odd. Um, pull this one out. And have it go on top. Because um, it goes on top. And it'll look better if it goes on top. If you always got one part that looks better on top. Ah, do not smooth. Don't you dare smooth. Get this nice adjusted there. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Next is try and get a little. <laughs> I know this might feel like overkill, but I just really have this feeling deep in my soul that if I just insert all of these seams and then take them down or out just a little bit, I can get this beautiful corner seam in a kind of more of an automatic way instead of sculpting them all individually. So, what I'm gonna start, go ahead and do, and this is a pretty nice little um, feature, is I'm going to uh, say groups by. Oh, I don't have it in here. I thought I had it in here. Somewhere I've got groups by... Hmm. Well, it's definitely in here. Group by normals. And this is basically going to split my mesh... Oh, windows. It's doing it a lot today. Sometimes there's there's time periods where it, it you, you stop having windows take over your, your Wacom, and then it, there's sometimes when windows is just very aggressively trying to implement their fucking touch PC things, which nobody wants, 
into your into your tablet driver. And I have a tablet driver running with this. Please stop. You know, take it off my tablet driver. I, and I've unchecked all the settings. Just go away with your bullshit. So anyway, what I have here is group by nouns, and that just takes kind of like a threshold model, and in this case, it is 45 angles. And anything that is a uh, harder edge than 45 angles gets um, a polygroup corner edge. So I'm going to use that, and now I'm going to inset region um, polygroup all. There we go. And I'm going to kind of make sure I have the perfect width here. And then what I can do is I can just tap on all of these different polygroups I have. And it's going to do exactly the same operation. I'm just going to go through and do that. Sure, this might be overkill, but I just think it'll add that little bit of extra convincing detail, which could push the push these seams over the edge and not kind of um, have me spend so much time later sculpting all of these seams. Because otherwise, when I get to the absolutely detailing phase, I'll just get stuck on, on kind of sculpting all of these seams by hand, because maybe I'll actually feel that I absolutely need them. Right now I'm kind of unsure, so just in case at this phase, it's probably the best time to add in these seams before adding a whole bunch of other detail. There we go, let's see if I missed. I'm going to do the same on the loops just because they definitely seem to have that same sort of a sculpt thing going on. And then I'll just extrude that outer side a teeny easy tiny bit. Yeah. Happy, happy, happy! Joy, joy! That looks good. Same thing with... What I could either do is... Um, no, I'm, I'm just going to use the simple extrude. Uh, and do poly group all. Once I'm following step size, I don't care. Just a tiny bit like that. Do the same with all the others. It's just adding that little bit of extra definition. And when I turn on dynamic, oh, holy shot. I have no idea what's going on. I'm gonna do a quick save just in case. And that is a quick save, not a quick save. I mispronounced that. Uh, because there's a function in ZBrush called quick save. And what I was just doing was doing a quick regular save. So important distinction there. Tap on all these. Yeah. Might have been quicker if I decided to push the inner polygroup inside, but well, too late for that, huh? Feel the aural waves pierce through you in this warm dark night. Mm. The souls of the damned are gnarling at each other in the their wasted lives. If you can hear the music, it is talking about gnarling wasted bodies. Gnarling Oh, what a tease. Invisible bites. Oh, God. I'm an eternal young spirit. Anyway, just going through and pulling the rest of these groups out. Sometimes I miss the modifiers I have through these max. I missed this one right here, but um, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's it's not 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 really. It's fine if there's one or two that are not um, pushed out, since this is way too defined right now anyway. Yeah. I like that. I like that. It, it, it's starting to look like cloth seams. And when I subdivide this, um, first I'm gonna try and do a 
Mesh integrity fixed mesh. Mesh partially hidden. Okay, fixed mesh. Okay. Uh, let's see what happens if we're to die now. Oh no. Seems like maybe these. Do I want these rounded corners? Yes, I, I do in part want these rounded corners, but what I want more than these rounded corners is control over how round they are. So that's where Z Modeler is going to come in handy once again, because I can just go in here and say insert. Oh, I'm on the. Get the grab, hover an edge, hit the insert. Kind of go in here. Oh, come on. There we go. We can get much nicer, harder corners to these seams. Again, not sure if this is an absolutely necessary detail, but it just, I feel, I just feel in my heart and soul that this is going to make me happy later on. I'm gonna actually turn off this into a do nothing mode because it keeps on buggering into my. Move topological, kind of move these points inside. Uh, that is not working on this one. Somehow they got merged. Fine, 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 fine. Be that way. I'm gonna move this one in though. I'm going to use my Aku Curve to pull this one up here so that it's kind of working more like an actual seat. There we go. Yes! Yes! That is looking a lot more gorgeous. No! Do not use this smooth brush. Turn that to inflate. I wanted to turn it off but it didn't cooperate so I'm kind of giving up on life. Topological. Yes, yes, I enjoy this. It makes me happy. Move days around. I wish that this side here. Let's see what's happening. Move this out a bit. Back to dynamic. That's looking better. These. I kind of wish that what I'm gonna do is it's gonna be. I don't know. Kind of wish that this was um, not the shape it currently is taking, but I don't see there's anything I can do about it. This one's definitely going to have to be taken to side here. Oh goodness, why is why is my move topological not working? These are obviously not connected. Or are they? What? How could these be connected? That could never be true. Okay, that's fine. Okay, okay. I think this covers all the modeling so far. I'm going to turn off dynamic and just um, look into one of my insert brushes. Well, it's not insert modem, drive brushes, drive them brushes. There's a button brush here somewhere. Actually, there's an integrated um, insert clothing parts. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not it. BI clothing hardware. And it looks... I don't know. None of these buttons either. BI... I guess I'd have to go into the parts brush. I know there's a button here, but that, that's not a button. Okay, back to the... There's gotta be a button somewhere. Into the back chain, mother's straps, embroidery. Skeleton embroidery, icons, brush, OBJs. Where is our button brush? I guess I could check this one out. This is an insert multi mesh brush I made eons ago. Nah, it doesn't have. I know I was inserting buttons just a little while ago. Where did they go? Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Stitches? No, it would be well. Where could this brush be? I don't know. I don't know. Machine parts, half ring, inflate, model kit, steam gears. I guess I could go with clothing hardware, but that's not. Hmm. I know I have one. I know I know I had a button brush. Specifically for buttons. Hmm. Metal, nano mesh, rope, pouches. Can't imagine being in here. No, that's just some pouches I made. Oh, where could it be? Well maybe it's in the default brush directory, David. Let's see here. Maybe you've got it local? Oh, or maybe it's on my work computer, and uh, some, I mean, I guess it's some sort of a firewall issue, but our work computers don't work with Google Drive, so not all of the brushes that I use there get synchronized. No, I guess I'll have to use the, um, the ugly button. I, I don't like ugly buttons. This is terrible. Oh, that's a terror. oh, I can't use that button. Oh god, well, oh god, what am I going to do? This is a super visible button too, so I can't just bullshit this. Um, clothing hardware, maybe I can do it with one of these? These are snaps. These are definitely not buttons. These are definitely not buttons. Okay, so what I'll do is in between sessions I'm going to go onto the interwebs and look for a good button brush. And if that fails, I'm gonna go and just make my own button. Because I, th th that is that is a no go that that we just don't have a button for this. Mm -hmm. Just in that shape a little bit more, and now. I don't need this one. Okay. There we go. And now I'm just. Um, I'm actually going to fix my tablet driver here and go into turn off. And go into the actual subdivision. Start kind of see what happens if I sculpt a little bit here. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to actually mess my poly groups. Turn my Z intensity down. I'll need another subdivision. I just want to test to see what I can, what kind of detail I can start um, planning for. Yeah, there we go. That's that's exactly what I'm looking at. It's not actually taking the inside brush brush, but uh, yeah, and this is just gonna a bit more of a seam look to the whole straps. Seam. Always kind of toggling between the um, the additive and the subtractive. Okay, I am not completely happy with this, I have to say, it's just not quite doing the shape that I want yet, but we'll get there. there we go. Make sure this is directly on top of each other, and we'll obviously sculpt this more in the actual retailing place. So, yeah, yeah, pretty much happy with this. Checking time, okay. What well, we can start doing. There we go. Is switch to the hat. And what I want to do for the hat is to. Um, I think what I'll actually do is go with an insert um, nano mesh brush to get the. Uh, this kind of a texture going. So we've got the, the clothy texture, which. 
um, was going to be perfectly done in Substance or later on or in another texturing app, depends. Um, but what we, I think, wouldn't hurt is to kind of predefine the structure in here because that's something that's going to work a lot better in 3D since it can be done on a face per face basis. So that means that the first thing we need to do is kind of space these faces out in the, the distribution we want for the insert mesh to then go across. So for that... Oh no, I forgot to turn on X symmetry! Why does this not have X symmetry? Okay, go all the way back, turn on X symmetry, turn off dynamic. Use the secondary smoothing algorithm, which is basically a relaxed algorithm. And that is just really great for um, getting a uniform uh, distribution for the faces. Check, check dynamic. This is already looking a lot smoother. And we're going to sculpt this to actually have the shape of a beanie later. Um, but right now, I'm happy with that. For some reason, these edges got creased, so I'm actually going to uncrease all. And that's just going to fix this edge. One of the developers was complaining about that. And basically, what I was thinking in my head was just, well, I, I forgot to crease this edge. I'm sorry. It is a two second thing. And I, I just wrote, like, yeah, yeah, I'll fix that. That's, and that's no problem. It's just like, yeah, okay. Like, of all the things you could come from. That edge, but sure, it, it doesn't look good. Anyway, I kind of worked that shape over, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick save here of the whole project, just to make sure that we don't lose any information because often when switching between different sub tools, I just have had relative, kind of maybe a little bit negative experiences. Not that that's ZBrush's fault, but um, let's see. Oh goodness, I always forget how to how to move the program. Huh. Maybe it's locked. Oh, this is this is bad. What am I gonna do? Can't figure out how to move my ProRef window. Window? This is locked. Oh, that's why. God, why would I ever lock the window? Anyway, here's Q. We're going to... Ah, actually, forget this. I'm not going to lock the window. Push this back. I'm going to go uh, with a Q cube anyway, since topology and all that. I'm going to take the deformation here and actually unify this so that it's got a 1-1 ZBrush ratio. I think ZBrush works in, um, I think it works in meters, so this is 1 meter wide and 1 meter tall and all that. And it's just going to make sure that it's um, the exact size as a face, because that's how the insert multi mesh will work. So what I want to have so I want to have a pattern that kind of goes diagonally like this and diagonally like this and makes um, a bunch of triangles here. So what I want to do is a actually um, start off by using my Z modeler brush, um, kind of just split this point here and then bevel these edge loops. That's not what I want. Um, well, I guess I can split the point and then stitch it all back together. No, I didn't want to do it. First, second, first, second, first, second, first, second, first, second. There we go. And now, uncrease all. Do the thing. And I want to delete these. Can I do the actual complete? Hmm. Well, no, you can't. No, I can do the same thing. I'm gonna hide this. Delete hidden mirror and weld in the y direction. Now I've got symmetrical on both sides. I should be able to. Oh no, there is a point here. Oh no. Um, I think this should be able to be fixed with just a fixed mesh. Oh, um, yes, yes, it did. And now uh, switch back, fix my Windows driver, and um, bevel. Nope, nope. 
no, there's still an issue. Oh, right. Huh. Well. I want to just get this diagonal here. Give me what I want. What I could do is actually um, kind of a. This is not the way Zebrush was intended to be used, but it could work. With this, these. Now just use the panel loops once again. No polish, please. Alright, but we have you grouped. Hmm, I see. Let's, um, let's turn all of this off, stick to my windows chart. Group this. Kind of loose. That's perfect. And I want to have a bit more bevel, and I want to. Make it double, panel loops, okay, nice. And now what we can just do is say inset, insert region. Oh no, that's not working, that is not working. Um, what happens if we just smooth this a bit? Is that a uniform smooth? Not quite, but it's giving me a cool shape, so, hmm. Well, so much repair magic modeling in ZBrush. That is not at all what I expected. I'll do all that. So what I really just want to do is just have some... Maybe if I inflate all this, it'll just be enough. What I want to do is I just want to set this. What is it doing right here? Hmm. Uh, switch over to polygroup mode, make sure this is the same. There we go. I'll inset this, same on this, this side. And then you just Q mesh this in. Polygroup. Um, I can actually use extrude, polygroup all. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And now I'll do a kind of just uniform smooth this out. And that looks a bit like uh, what I want for this right here. What I need, I'm going to actually um, append a plane for size reference. Sit, sit on that. Oh, it's right here. Um, perfect. So I'm going to rotate this in the Y axis by 90 degrees. So I expect it. Z? No? Maybe? Okay. And now on the X90. Whatever. Okay, maybe now on the Y90. There we go. And I'm going to switch down the plane, kind of check, make sure this could be a tiny bit larger in all axes. There we go. And now I'm going to just um, use the clip. Oh, I don't even have a clip, right? I'm going to go here. Clip right. And try and clip it directly onto the size of that plane. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna see what happens if I use the trim right. Because sometimes it works. Oh, that worked actually. Um, oh, that's a, that's really not what I expected at all. Even though I hit alt. There we 
go. Trim this down. Okay. I'm gonna use this as I'm gonna just make the size a tiny bit more. Move it over to the side. Okay. This is going to be, I'm going to um, go ahead and save this tool. This is going to be hat text, hat texture. And this is going to kind of work like a geometry texture. Um, there's a plugin for Max which came out a while ago um, called Auto Modeler, and it basically uses the principle of geometry textures, but these geometry textures use the UV. Um, what I'm actually going to do is use the insert nano mesh, um, create a nano mesh brush from this, Nanomesh brush. Oh, I have to create insert mesh brush first. Create insert mesh. I could. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my existing insert mesh brushes on my Google Drive and I'm going to append it to that because I know I have this um, embroidery brush and this is kind of in an embroidery category. Okay, those are all separate. So. I sure don't have a different one anywhere. No, I don't. There's my buttons brush! What? How were you hiding from me this whole time? Ah, oh, such a twat. How could I miss that? All right, create insert mesh. New, insert mesh brush. You're inserting fine. B, create nano mesh brush. Okay, switch back to hat. Here we go. Take it out of dynamic mode. Insert nano mesh at the bottom. Go into nano mesh settings. Okay, we are going to do it for all. Fill it. Size 100 plus. Oh shit! Size 1. Yah, that is how I roll it. Constant. Flip at the bottom mode. We're gonna make it a size of 1 point a little bit si high, higher. And then I got um. um Alignment. Oh, well, what we need is we need to put it onto all polygons, or at least uh, do it like um, poly by normals. Yep, and then do this whole poly group. Oh, so nano mesh. Yep, and now we're going to switch this nano mesh setting to fill and switch the size to 1.1 like we have, and. Holy cow, that's a space helmet. <laughs> that is a space helmet. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's ridiculous. Uh, I'm gonna do a bit of a X rotation ver variance. Hmm, that's not really helping. Y rotation? No, C rotation? Oh, here we go, a little bit of that. And I think we need to make it larger. Maybe if we take the tiling up, make it to two. And put the V tiling to two. That just looks like an ultimately sci fi helmet. <laughs> Definitely not what I was um, expecting. Like, uh, it might just be the super hard edges on this end, then the middle, little holes in the middle. Um, but I'm gonna do. This is, this is a really good sci fi helmet, but it's just not what I was going for at all. I'm gonna see uh, what happens if I'll just dynamesh this, because that might give it that. Um, a little bit of, oh, might have been too high of a dynamesh here. Yep. Uh, wait for the program. Fucking Windows installed itself as German on my computer. Tried to change the language settings, but it did not cooperate. So, I think this might be a good um, time to end the session. Um, it's going to take some time for a ZBrush to catch itself. Um, the reason it hung up, and this is always super important in working on any 3D application, is always to be looking for the reason why your application is freezing is, um, I've got a very, very large size here. This is a one by one meter object. And this resolution is how many vertices per meter. I think that's the actual, I think that's the actual value. So this is a very, very high poly count that it's going to be generating, um, probably in the, even a couple million. It's just super, super dense. Um, so what I should have done is kind of remembered, hey, this is